Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop, and this will be the 10th installment, I think, of the LBSC Titch locomotive that we're building. And to continue what we've been working on the last couple of weeks, this episode is all about continuing the, the, the brake assembly. And in, what you'll see is I had to correct a mistake that I made with the brake hangers which I didn't realize until I made the brake bars that go across here. Um, so you see that, you know, the correcting technique, I think that's useful for lots of uh, allegorical for a lot of projects like this. You may be interested to watch that. It involves silver soldering and then basically redoing these things. Then I made the bars and the 10 clevis pins and the little connecting rods that go here. So. There's a lot of detail work that goes in it, and I'm really excited about how this all came out. Um, one more step, you know, there's a lot of, obviously there's a lot of parts and pieces that go into a locomotive like this, and this is just the brake system. You can see how complex the thing is starting to look. But the cool thing is, just to kind of give you an overview, you know, I want to get the brake system done, and then the very next thing we'll jump into will be trying to get it ready to run on air. So building the, the pistons, the steam chests, and the valve connecting the valve assembly to the eccentrics that we built earlier. So it's gonna be a fun journey, everybody. I sure hope you enjoy it. It's a neat little locomotive, you know, compared to um, bigger ones like my Allen Mogul over there, which is covered in blankets. You can, but you can see how big that thing is compared to this, so. Really excited about the Titch and uh, the opportunity to build a three and a half inch gauge locomotive like this. So thank you for joining me. This will be probably a kind of a long episode, maybe about 30 minutes. So I hope you find it enjoyable. There's a lot of cool build stuff in here. And I tried, I did, I wanted to mention, I, I noticed folks have made comments about the audio technique and so forth. So I purposefully filmed a few episodes with showing machining and I didn't talk over it and hopefully that will be a little bit better should be pretty obvious what I'm doing but let me know what you think um, I, like I, I've probably told you guys I'm shooting all this with my iPhone and it, the pictures picture clarity comes out great the ease of uploading is there um, and I, I'm a guy that works full-time and has a family so it's not like I have hours to spend editing and so forth, which obviously shows. But I hope the content is interesting, and I do appreciate you all being with me on the journey. And like I said, I hope you enjoy this episode and have a great week. Thanks, everybody. Okay, I want to make the brake beams. There's two big ones that go across, and then a rear one. It's like a little pull bar. And I'm making all these things out of eighth-inch steel eighth inch by half inch and what I did is you can see I cleaned off I used the belt sander to clean off the the uh, scale off the steel and then blued it with a sharpie marker and marked them out not much to do to this one at first the large one except drill some holes and then these the two little ones where's the, here's the other little one these things, I'll have to mill them down to the quarter inch size and drill the holes. And then this one just has to have the ends rounded. This one and this one both have to have the ends turned in the lathe so that I can put a little nut on the end. And here's the three bars. As you can see, the holes are all drilled and I've laid out lines. Hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> there. Just a give me a general idea about where I'll be turning in the lathe. So I'm going to do the big one first. I mean, the good news here is if I, if I mess it up, I can always cut another piece of steel. But uh, these are the two that need to get their ends turned. It's eighth inch thick steel, so I just need to remove a little bit um, down to 112 thou to um, thread them 440. I think for the the big one for sure, I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw and cut little no notch off the, the excess. No sense sitting and trying to remove all that on the lathe. 
So here we are with the ends band sawed off. And I don't know if you can see that, but I did some marking, trying to mark the center a little bit to help me line this up. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay, this was pretty tricky here. Setting up the piece of eighth inch by half inch steel for in the four jaw chuck. I'm using my good inter rapid indicator there, and I've got it within a couple thou. I mean, all I get, it just needs to be as closely centered as I can possibly get. I have a hard time believing that Curly Lawrence and the gang actually used something this exacting, but I'll show you. Let's see, bring it around. There we go. So yeah, that's pretty accurate. Let's see, that's, that thing's right on the five. Of course, I mean, the edge has been belt sanded. This is not a perfect specimen by any stretch of the imagination, but we're making a bar that's going to pull on some brakes. You know, it's important to keep that in perspective, I think. Let me bring this around and one more view of my level of accuracy <laughs> okay all right so what do we have each one of those is a half a thou each line so two th two thou that is certainly acceptable there's four lines after the five so i'm gonna i'm good there now i'll have to readjust and and do the flat part okay that was sure interesting so I did mark the center before I started this exercise, and uh, now I'm just to kind of double check and make sure I was reading the everything correctly. I've put my one of my little tailstock centers in the little pip there, and we're good to go. So I'll come back and turn that down to 112 thou, and then thread it, thread a portion of it to four. Thou. So here's the first couple of passes of turning the square end into a round one. I purposefully didn't talk to try to talk over the machine that time. So hopefully this will be a little bit better video. Okay, here we have the, uh, the first one. I just put a little 440 thread on the end of it there and was checking it with a little nut. Well, it turns out Joe Pye is not the only one that has little lathe mishaps. I went a little bit too far, caught the edge of the cutter in that flat, the big flat. I was almost done, as you can see. Almost had it down to a round end there. This is the smaller of the two brake bars, so we'll have to cut up another one. It's late tonight, so I'm not going to mess with it. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i go inside and cut a new small one in the morning and drill the holes and put the round ends on it then. Oh well. Word to the wise, be careful. Here's a little interesting note. I just made the replacement. Well, let me show you the botched up one. This is the one I ruined last night. <laughs> the the front beam that I was making. So I just made the replacement and I thought, you know, before I go any further, I'll test fit it and see what it looks like. Well, this is the interesting part, y'all. Um, let me switch this around if you can see. Here it is in place, the new beam. I haven't drilled holes in it yet. I just wanted to see what it looked like, which that's a best practice I've found through the years. The only other locomotive I've built, you know, try to anticipate how one, one thing's going to fit to the next. Well, if you can tell, there is no movement, no adjustability in this thing. And the whole point is that it needs to be able to move backwards so that it can bring the brake shoes in contact with the driving wheels of uh, brake shoes up here. So what's happening, the thing is hitting the frame. So the arms, basically the holes in the arms where the bar goes through, here, these holes, are too close. They're not far enough away from the pivot point 
you're too close and the bar is hitting the frame. And it's actually even worse. I test fit the large one. Here's the large um, one. It's actually worse in this one. So, let me see. I, you can't even get it in. Let me just try and I'll put it in one side and see. So, it flops. It won't. <laughs> there's no clearance. It won't go. So, my options would be to try to remake the drop arms and I may have to do that or the other possible option would be to take these arms apart the, when I say drop arms I mean hangers I could take them apart and I could silver solder the holes and then just drill new holes further south basically uh, closer to the bottom and there is enough material in both of these hangers barely enough in these that would give me a little clearance. It doesn't need a lot more clearance in the front but it definitely does um, for the back one you know but so I think tomorrow I will be silver soldering these holes and drilling new holes that are further down further away from the hanger point and if that fails then I just simply have to make new hangers the nice thing is that this is just uh, sheet steel, so if I goof it up, I can make another one. I'm glad I didn't throw away my scrap yet, that the, the material that the hangers came out of. So I have plenty left if I need to make some new hangers, and uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted as I move along. Sorry about the long-winded explanation. It's funny, I, I was really hoping to get all this wrapped up and be making the little clevises for all this and the rods and at least have that stuff done by now. But, you know, sometimes you just got to go at a pace that works and um, make sure you learn the lessons as you go. I'll keep you posted. Here's a nice little view of the brake system as I have it so far. One thing, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this last night, but I've got the little stubs, little steel stubs ready to silver solder inside there so that I can re-drill the hangers and make them give a little clearance. Um, but I'm also thinking about turning these down so instead of using 440 on the ends of the brake bars, using a 256 because I have, if you'll, here's a contrast. If you see how much smaller the 256 is not to, than the 440, this is 256 in my hand. So <clears throat> I turn these down to 0 0.86 or thereabouts and then thread the end of them 256. I'm going to try that, but first I'm going to silver solder the little pieces of steel inside there. And here we have the four pieces with the little, got some excess blobs of silver solder I'm going to have to grind off there. but. Um, that's what it looks like beforehand and I'll take it to the belt sander now and sand them up clean and show you what what it looks like when I bring them back. I think I made pretty good joints. I always wear a respirator or a mask when I use the belt sander. Okay that worked out good. Some of them you can't even see where the uh, repair was at all happily. The top two came out really nice. Bottom ones, there's a little void there. I guess the plug I used was a little bit too short, but looks like I made a good repair. I don't think it's going to impact anything as far as drilling a new hole and smaller hole further down towards the end. Here's the fourth one. All right, on to the next phase, which would be reducing the size of these things and um, threading a 256 thread instead of a 440. All right, really pleased with this. I, had, I did have to recenter this. Uh, this is the smaller of the two, but I got it centered nicely and having that round stem already with the 440 thread on it made it easy to use the uh, dial test indicator to center this up. So I got it centered and turned it down to actually 84 thousandths of an inch and then I used my tailstock die holder here with a 256 die in it 
to put the 256 thread on and I just checked it with this little nut which as you can see is considerably smaller than the 440 nuts and I think that'll be good for the brake clearance so very happy about that. Okay to re-drill the, the new and smaller hole for the 256 size I made a little jig it's nothing fancy but just a little piece of five six or eighth inch by half inch steel and I drilled and tapped a 440 screw hole there at the top <clears throat> excuse me so that I can lock each one of them in with a little lock washer and then I went down basically just went down as far as I could go to give me the hole this one's a little bit off center but there's enough steel there to that it'll be, it'll be fine and it pulls the other way anyway so now I now I can just replicate this process for the remaining three. Hangers. Here's the second one ready to drill. I just thought I'd take this picture so you can see where the new hole is in relation to the uh, old ones and why I wanted to fill the old holes because the center of the new hole is about where the base of the original one hey, was. Folks, I'm pleased to report a little bit of success with the modifications that I made to the hangers and to the, the draw bars with the little 256 nuts on there. I think that'll show up okay on the on the screen, but there's just enough free movement in the in the bars now. I mean, not a lot. They, it's funny cuz you don't really get this from the book, but they barely clear and and they do need to be notched so that the bar clears the rim of the wheel. I just notched the back half of my my larger bar figured might as well leave the front part in, in place for added weight. But I'm really pleased that these things fit and there's enough room and adjustability. So the next thing to work on will be the uh, couplers, the little clevis rod, clevises and rods. And that's actually kind of fun. I made a ton of those for my Allen Mogul and I'm um, looking forward to it. Maybe I'll bang out. I have to make like 10 clevises and then thread the rod. So I'm not sure I'll get all that done tomorrow, but it'd be nice if I can. So I'll keep you posted. Shot of mass producing the clevis pins or rod ends as they're called in the book. First step is to drill some holes just to make the milling <coughs> of the slots easier. Um, so this is what the drilled holes look like. Then I mount them together in the mill, get ready to mill them out with the eighth inch end mill. And here are some ones where the milling is complete and I've already center drilled for drilling and tapping for 256. It's a little different from how the book calls for making them, but I'm doing all this at once and then I'll put them in the 5C collet chuck in the lathe and then be able to, to uh, turn the little shoulder and then drill and tap the center for 256 for the rods. Hey, this is the last of the clevises doing the lathe work on it. Got it in the 5C collet chuck and I use my diamond tool holder to turn the outside diameter, the back of it, down to 3 16ths of an inch. And then center drill, drill, and there's the drill. And then I use my uh, tap, my 256 tap on the tailstock die holder to tap the hole. Okay, working on the rods. This, thing, this came out really nice. I made this together last night. Got two of the clevises in. I used the 332nd inch brass rod and I had to go buy it. And the only place I could find this locally was at my Ace Hardware. Really thrilled that they have this. I got this piece, this piece several years ago, <clears throat> the one I've used so far at my old favorite hobby shop in town, but they've closed. So really thrilled that the Ace had it. The closest I could find was some about 80,000 steel rod that's used for attic insulation to kind of hold it in place but it's a little bit just you know five thou too small basically for the 256 um, clevis and so they came out really nice and tonight I'm gonna make the second one that's what my idea is just make the the um, longer ones first as they connect together then the the two short ones mm -hmm. That will connect to the draw bar this part and that'll be kind of free floating basically until I 
make the rod that goes to the back and the, the crank that, that tightens up the brakes. So anyway, came out really good. Well, I did, I took the 332nd inch brass rod, put it in the lathe, turned it down just a few thou to about, about 84 thousandths of an inch measured with my micrometer. I did a whole quarter inch section and then I used the tail stuck die holder to thread it 256. Did it on one side first, set the thing in place with a clevis pin, marked it off, and did the other side. That way I could get the exact right thing without fiddling with the measurement and ending up a little too short. The reason I went ahead and did a whole quarter inch is I figured, well, if I have to shorten them to, to get the brakes to tighten up when I want to, then I'll always be able to do that when by making it a little longer and a little bit longer threaded portion. All right, I'm gonna shoot a very short, well, I don't know how short it's gonna be, but a little segment. I've got the 332nd inch rod and brass rod and the, in the, the small three jaw chuck that's in my 5C collet chuck. I've set the ZRO, set the Z axis to zero here. And from last night's work, I already have my zero set for how much I need to take off. So it'll only take a second to machine this down um, a quarter of an inch, and um, I'll, I'll just show you that part of the process. I'm not going to talk while I do it, so you don't have to worry about me shouting over the machine. Naturally, it's very springy since I got so much, it's a, such a small diameter and I've got so much sticking out. So, yeah, see that hardly took anything off. Um, I need to take off a good bit more. So rather than making you watch this problem, I'm just going to repeat this till I get it to the right diameter and then I'll do a little segment of the thread. Okay, I got it down to the right diameter, so now I'm going to put a little dab. Of, I, I use the file to uh, file a little rounded section at the end to make it easier for the tailstock die holder to get in, engaged. I've got the lathe RPM now, it's set down to 70. And let me scooch the tailstock die holder up close. With these little, little dies, you want to really make sure you've got it engaged properly. And so you don't send it off at an angle. Then once you have it, then you can start what I like to use is the, over on the, this part of the lathe over here, the, there's an inching feature. So I like to press that just to get it started. And, dang it, you can't see this, but it, you can tell it's making, it makes these nice little brass curls. Well, like this. This is from last night. So I can see these little brass curls coming up almost like holiday tinsel decoration. And I'm taking it off by hand. You can back it off. I could use the reverse in the lathe, but it's so nice to feel the threads. Brush it off a little bit. All right. All right, there's a little burr there on the end, so I'm going to run the file over it. Make sure it's smooth. Okay, let me take the camera out. 
There you go. Okay, so there's a little threaded piece of brass rod. So now I can take it out and test fit this on the locomotive. I'll show you how that. Alrighty. So here's the bar that we just threaded, or the rod, I should say, the brass rod. I've got it threaded into a clevis and just loosely attached with a little 256 screw in the front bar. And I've got it twisted all the way in there. And then I just press against that one, press against the rear bar, make sure the brake shoes are all the way as far as they can go against the wheels, so it, as though it's in tension. And then I can just take and mark the end just shy of the rear bar there. I'll just put a blue mark on with my Sharpie and then I'll, I can cut it and then thread this the quarter inch portion here. And like I said, if it's too long, I can always shorten it. But that's all there is to that. Hi folks, for the final segment of this week's episode, I thought I'd show the summary that shows the, the, this is obviously the chassis is upside down, but you see the front bar, the center bar, and the little draw bar, pull bar, equalizer bar, I think it's called, in the back, all, the, all 10 of the clevis ends and the little pull bars that I've made out of brass. That um, That's what it all looks like. Next will be, there's a rod that goes across between these two holes. I need to make some bronze bushings and the rod has some arms on it that are the actuators that actually pull and will apply the brakes. But that'll be in the next upcoming episodes, the next things to make. So, like I said, this will be the last segment. Thanks, everybody, for joining me on this journey. I hope you find it interesting. Please give me a thumbs up. If you would, just lets me know people are out there and watching them, and it encourages me to continue making the videos. And if you have a question or a comment, please speak up. I'm glad to hear from you. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great week.